Hey everybody, Mike B here with another video for you. Today this one is going to be kind of responding to a comment or question that a viewer left on a previous video. Hey there, it's Jesse asks, Hey Mike, I am currently taking apart my Turkish Mauser M38. You think you can do a field stripping video of that? Because it's kind of more of a bitch than a K98. I said it's literally the exact same as a K98, but yeah, I can do the video. So, that's what we're going to do today. It's a very simple process. The Mauser 98 action is actually a very simple uh, platform to field strip and maintain out in combat settings or out in field settings. This video is for field stripping and somewhat disassembling the bolt strictly for maintenance and cleaning purposes only. These are built on Gavari 98 receivers that were um, sold or given to the uh, Turks and then um, the Ottoman Empire at first and then the Turkish later. So that's a really, it's a Gavari 98 receiver. This works for a K98, VC24, um, Gewehr 98, you name it, and the M38. Basically any large ring, full length, 98 action, and also works on the Yugoslavian intermediate length uh, M24 action. So, without further ado, this process is pretty simple for most Mausers, but they differ slightly, but this is again the 98. I know I'm being redundant, but if you're if you're using a different model rifle, you might have more questions, and I can maybe do that in, the, in a different video. So, it's like with any firearm, before you start monkeying around with it, you gotta make sure it's clear. So we're clearing the chamber and in the magazine. Now, on a 98 action and most Mauser actions, the, the bolt release is gonna be somewhere back here. It's gonna look something like this. It might be a little bit going over there on like a 1903 style. But nevertheless, this is usually where it's located. So, to remove the bolt, you simply pull that to the side and the bolt comes out. Now, that's just for taking it apart, absolutely field stripping it, so you can run a rod through there or a bore snake or whatever, you can do that with the bolt in. But if you want to do a cleaning rod or something like that or just maintain the bolt like this as is, that's the only thing you need to do, right? Very simple, very easy to do. Now, if you want to disassemble the bolt, you actually have to do one step before you remove the bolt from the receiver. You have to flip the safety lever up to the half cock or half flag or half safe position, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it the half flag position for the sake of the video. People call it all different things, but that's what I'm just going to refer to it as for this video. Now, you do the same thing you just did. You'll notice that there's not as much tension when you open the bolt up. That's because the... Um, you'll, you'll see why in a little bit. So remove that from the receiver. Make sure that flag is still up there, that safety lever is still up there. Now you are going to actually be using the stock of your rifle if it's got one of these things called a takedown disc. If it doesn't, I'd recommend getting a block of wood or some other kind of soft thing like a hockey puck because you're going to have to remove the firing pin spring tension from the firing pin and in order to do that you need to push down on the firing pin. Now, why they call this a takedown disc is because once you just unscrew this, oh, I didn't talk you through that, my bad. I'll keep going. I'll just back it up a little bit. Alright, so you want to hit this little detent right here, little plunger. And then you can unscrew counterclockwise, righty tighty, lefty loosey applies on these threads. And mine's got a little bit of grease on the firing pin, but whatever, most of them do. Now, this is what you're going to have. You're going to have two pieces. You're going to have the bolt body and the extractor and some other little funny parts on there. You don't need to worry about that unless you're going to be cleaning it. But for now, if you want to keep disassembling and field stripping the bolt, this is what we're going to be doing. So, this disc runs, there's a channel that runs through the entire butt stock. Again, if you don't have this, you can use a piece of wood. I'm not going to use the stock, but I have used a block of wood or a hockey puck before. Just something that's, because this will put a dent in whatever you're uh, pushing on. There's a lot of, many pounds or kilos of pressure on the spring. So, all right, for this sake, we're just going to be using the takedown disc. Now, this lever, or the safety lever comes into play. You're going to be using it as kind of a handle because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pushing down this way on the, I think that's called the bolt sleeve. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm kind of having a brain fart, but we'll just call this part the bolt sleeve and then we'll call this part the sear. Um, this could be the cocking piece too, I call it the sear because that's exactly what it is. Anyway, so this is gonna be pushing down this way and I'm gonna show you that from the top view pretty soon. And then while this is pushed down, you're gonna wanna rotate this sear or cocking piece, whatever you wanna call it, I'm gonna call it the sear again. You rotate either this way or that way and you'll see why after I get it apart. So we're just gonna do that. Be very careful with this. If you're not experienced, you haven't done this a lot, or you're having problems with it, don't force anything and don't, if you're not comfortable with it, get somebody that is, or just relax, walk away, and then come back to it later when you're calmed down and you're not, not frustrated. Ask me how I know how that strategy works. Anyway, so we're gonna use this, kind of. I used to use the meaty part of my um, index finger knuckle at the bottom, and then I'll push down on that, on that um, bolt sleeve. You'll see that it's all the way down. Now this is gonna require a little bit of strength, once it's down, it'll hold itself there mainly, but make sure you have leverage on it. Then we're going to rotate the cocking piece slash sear. I just said I was going to call it the sear, and I keep calling it the cocking piece, so whatever. 
and you rotate that, you'll see that once I get this firing pin spring off, it comes right off. All that tension is released. You'll see that there's kind of a, um, it's a square, there's a square side on, on bolt, or come on, focus, come on. You see it's a square, it's not a perfectly round firing pin. So this piece also has the channel in it that you can see right there that is the same shape. So you, when you line it up to put it on and twist it, those little grooves in there actually catch inside of here and that's what actually holds that sear on. So that's just kind of an explanation of that. Now if there's problems, if you've got like a bent firing pin, you might have issues taking the, uh, the sear off. I've had that happen before. And then I just use the old caveman vice bending the firing pin back and it works. So anyway, reassembly. Oh, if you want to take the safety out as well, flip that from the half leg. It'll be kind of floppy right now. And uh, go over to full safe, which is the far left position, and that'll just pop right out. Now, we're going to just reassemble this. Make sure you're always watching to make sure that that flag is in the half safe or half flag position because it's very important that it is when we put the bolt back in and back together. So you just take the firing pin spring, put it over the firing pin, and we're going to do the exact opposite of what we did before, but it's going to be a similar motion. So line up this, this uh, the bolt sleeve also has that channel. You can see the oblong channel. Make sure you line that up with the firing pin. That should be pretty easy. You'll know when it goes on because there. And then you see that'll come right through. Get the sear ready. And remember to go on sideways first. Yeah, it's, it's really greasy. That's why I'm uh, kind of struggling. All right, make sure that you can see that uh, the end of the firing pin is kind of flush or a little bit sticking out. In the back, make sure all three of those lugs are engaged or how many are in there. So, with that, that is now under tension. This firing pin spring is under tension, and we're good to go to put this back in the bolt body. So, you just put that in there and you rotate this thing clockwise until you start hearing a click, and it'll stop. It should stop in this position right here where it is in line with the bolt handle, right? Your extractor should be on the right side of your bolt, lined up with the front locking lug on the right side because that's how we get it back into the receiver. And if your magazine follower doesn't have that little bevel in it that allows you to just slide the bolt and play freely with it, uh, if it's got the basically the fifth round bolt hold open feature, you just have to do one more step for this one. I don't have to, I can just put the bolt back in right at home. And then we'll do a quick functions check. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's an extremely simple design, but we'll do that so we'll make sure that the, we cannot work the bolt when it's on full safe. The trigger will not engage the sear. And now we go, okay, now we can work the bolt freely in the uh, half flag position, but we cannot fire the weapon. That's good. And now we're going to take it off safe, make sure we can work the bolt, and then bam. Again, making sure the damn weapon's clear. Don't, don't be dry firing stuff if you got rounds anywhere near this. So anyway, that performed a functions check just fine. So we got it put back together. So I hope this helped. I know there's been a lot of videos made on this, but obviously somebody needed some help. If you if this still didn't answer your question, you're still having problems, uh, just please comment below. Um, if this helped you out, also comment. And if you want to support me to make cool videos like this that are educational and hopefully helpful to you, um, that would be great if you could check out my Patreon and uh, become a YouTube, or, and or become a YouTube channel member. I can talk today. Five bucks a month or more on either method of support gets into my Discord server, which has a bunch of cool people on there. It's very fun. I'm on there every day. If not, uh, you can just support me if you would like by doing the typical thing that you do with all your favorite content creators is liking and sharing this video, subscribing to the channel, and again, let me know what you think down in the comments. So thank you so much for watching, everybody, and we'll see you on the next video.